In this video we will focus on getting the bullets moving through the ECS system. We will learn how to do this using the entity query method. So let's dive in and learn more about the power of ECS. We want to be able to set parameters for each bullet prefab. With this in mind, we want to add a component to the prefab that will store such data. Let's go to Rider and create a new bullet component data class. I want the bullet to have three fields. Float free bullet direction, float free bullet rotation, and float bullet speed. Then we need to create a ferry class. This class will be responsible for setting the necessary fields in the editor. So let's add fields that will correspond to fields from component data. And of course, let's add getters. Ok, let's jump into the Unity editor and set parameters. For our prefab, I set the direction of motion to the left. So x equals minus 1. I also rotate the visualization according to the direction of motion. So y is minus 180 degrees. And the speed of movement say 5 units. Ok. Let's create a Baker class that inherits from Baker bullet offering and implement the bake method. Then get an entity. Transfer usage flags can be set to none. What I didn't say in the previous video is that when we instantiate prefabs, local transform and local to work components are automatically added regardless of our flag setting. According to documentation, an instantiate entity has the same components and component values as the prefab entity minus the prefab tag component. In view of this, the transfer component becomes an ECS equivalent. So in the case of bullets, there is no need to set this flag. However, for bullet spawner, this is applicable since designating the flag as none for an object that already exists in the scene will omit the addition of local transform, leading to micro-optimization. Now let's add the bullet component data via add component and just pass parameters. We want to use aspect to get data from system, so let's create bullet aspect. In bullet aspect, I need to add a read-only field that will point to our component data. And of course, getters. Now that we have the bullet aspect, we can extend the bullet spawner system class to set the rotation at spawn. Let's retrieve the aspect using system API. And let's create a new local transfer and assign to it the result of the local transfer dot from position rotation method. Pass two parameters: random position and quaterion dot euler bullet aspect dot bullet rotation. Let's also specify the order of rotation. In our case, it is x, y, z. And set component data to new value. Great, let's see if our bullets rotate. Hit play. And yeah, it does indeed work. Now we can create a class responsible for performing bullet movement. Let's name it bullet movement system. Of course, let's add on create on update on destroy methods. and burst compile attribute. Also the update in group attribute with the simulation system group parameter. 
just for the sake of clarity. Okay, let's now add the require matching queries for update attribute. This attribute guarantees that on update method will execute only if there is at least one matching query. It's time to build an entity query. Let's create a private variable and name it bullet entity query. Then inside the onCreate method, let's refer to the recently created field and assign to it the result of the query creation method. Let's write system API dot query builder dot with all bullet component data. Because we want to read all bullet component data. Dot with all local transform to retrieve and modify position dot build. Let's disable bullet spawner for a while. Now Add debug.log high to on update and check that everything is working as it should. As you can see, I can't see debug.log after turning off spawner. So let's remove the return. Hit play in Unity. And voila! Entity query is working correctly. Okay, delete this debug log and let's implement some movement logic. To retrieve data from entity query, let's introduce native array type. A native array exposes a buffer of native memory to manage code, allowing data to be shared between manage and native without marshalling costs. According to documentation, native arrays provide systems that allow them to be used safely with jobs and automatically track memory leaks. Let's create a local variable to hold an array of entities and an analogous array for local transfer. We are going to use allocator.temp. More about allocators in the next videos. We don't create a native array for bullet component data because we will use system API.get aspect to read the data in for loop. Okay, now let's cache delta time and create for loop in range from zero to bullet entities.length. Importantly, according to the documentation, the order of elements in native arrays is guaranteed. So you don't have to worry about pointing to the wrong element. So now let's cache bullet entity and bullet local transform. And let's get the aspect by calling system API dot get aspect, passing the entity as a parameter. Now we can get the current position of the bullet by referring to bullet local transfer dot position. Finally, we can calculate the new position. The new position is equal to the current position plus the speed of the bullet multiplied by the direction and the delta time. So New local transform is equal to local transform dot from position rotation with two parameters, new bullet position and bullet local transform dot rotation. Let's not forget to set the local transform by calling state dot entity manager dot set component data, passing the entity and new local transform as parameters. Remember to call this pose for each native array. After all, we don't want any memory leaks. That's it. Let's go back to Unity and set the camera X position to minus 10 so we can see more of the bullet's movement in the game view. Okay, let's play the game and check the stats. P 
performance for 2000 objects is still at a high level of about 200 frames per second. Awesome! In the next video, we will add list support using dynamic buffer, which will allow us to implement spawning of different prefabs. I'm glad you are with us. Thank you for all your support and see you in the next video.